Hi guys, we're going to talk about mass and kinetic energy. Your standard is PS 3.3. Analyze and interpret data to show the relationship between kinetic energy and the mass of an object and its speed. So let's start with mass. Mass is the amount of matter in something. And what's matter? It's stuff. So it's what you're made up of. It's what other things are made up of. If there's something there, it's made of matter. Speed or velocity is how fast something is moving. Now there is a distinction. Speed is just how fast it's moving. Velocity is how fast it's moving in a given direction. Kinetic energy is energy in motion. So all the moving things, light, heat, um, x-rays, sound waves, electricity, you moving, a ball rolling down a hill, all of those things have kinetic energy. An object that is moving has mass and speed, but which one of those has a bigger impact on kinetic energy? So let's look at kinetic energy and mass. If the mass of an object is doubled, that means you're multiplying it by two, then its kinetic energy is doubled too. If the mass of an object goes up times three, then the kinetic energy will go up times three as well. So that tells us that the mass and the kinetic energy are proportional. And we won't get into that detail. You're going to get that in math later on, but when you do, your brain should perk up and you'll remember kinetic energy and mass. If two objects move with the same speed, the most massive one is going to have a higher kinetic energy. And you know this is true because if you are moving a backpack that's full of stuff, it takes more energy for you to move it than it does for you to move an empty backpack. So if it has more mass, it takes more kinetic energy to be moving. Kinetic energy and speed. If the speed of an object is doubled, so times two, the kinetic energy goes up four times as much. If the speed of an object is tripled, times three, the kinetic energy goes up nine times as much. And this is called something being squared. So squaring a number is just multiplying it by itself. So two squared is two times two. Three squared is three times three. Four squared, four times four. So as you increase the speed of an object, its kinetic energy is going to go up what we call exponentially. And you're going to learn about exp exponents and squares and square roots in math later as well. But just know that when speed goes up, your kinetic energy goes up that number times itself. So what does this tell us? Speed affects kinetic energy more than mass does. So if we want to look at what is going to increase the kinetic energy in a moving object, speed will do this more than changing its mass. Let's review how to read a graph. I know that you have done this in elementary school, so we need to review a couple things. Remember first that the x-axis is the horizontal axis, or the one that goes across your screen, left to right. That is your x-axis. That's the first way that you move. Your y-axis is your up and down axis, like a yo-yo. Okay, so your y-axis is up and down like a yo-yo, and your x-axis goes across. This graph shows something increasing over, the over time. You can see that it starts in 2006, down low, or close to 10%. And as you move through the years, 2007 is a little higher, 2008 stays about the same, and by the 2011, you are up higher. If something increases over time, and your time is on the x-axis, your graph is going to be slanted upwards. So it's going to start lower on the left-hand side and then get higher on the right-hand side. The opposite would be if something is decreasing over time. If my time is on my x-axis, which goes across, the time is going to grow and something decreases. It starts high on the left, and then as the time moves along, it, the amount is going down on my y-axis, and it looks like a downward slope, like you're going down a hill. This graph shows you velocity or speed and mass. So you can see mass is my blue and the mass is steadily increasing along the x-axis. 
as the mass increases, the velocity increases even more. It's not just a nice steady straight line. It starts and increases just a little bit. And then as the mass grows, your velocity gets higher and higher. So you can see that it's got a little bit of a curve to it, which is showing that your speed is starting to increase. Okay, so graphs of moving things. Everything that moves should have similar looking graphs depending on the movement they're, they're, that they are doing. The first one we're going to look at is this green line. Okay, your green line, if you've got distance on your y-axis and time on your x-axis, as your time goes along, you can see that not a lot of time has passed, but the distance that my object has traveled has gone up a lot really quickly. So even though I've only moved three blocks on my time, my speed is already at the top. Okay, my distance is at the top. That is a fast speed, and it's a steady, constant speed. That's why my line is straight. S constant speed or the same type of speed should be a nice straight line. My blue line's the next one that I'm going to look at. You can see that this blue line has a curve. So as the time increases, my distance is also increasing. But as it goes along, you can see that the slope or the angle that my graph is at is getting even taller. It's getting closer to just being an up and down vertical line. That means that my object is speeding up and getting faster. So anything that is getting faster is gonna have this curved line going upwards. This next red line, this is like a car. Okay, I started and I was moving at a constant steady speed because I've got a nice straight line. And then, as my time increased, my distance didn't change at all. My distance stayed exactly the same. So my car must have been stopped because I was not going anywhere, but my time was changing. Okay, so now, for my downward slope, you can see that I'm moving from a stopped position, and then my, my distance is changing. It looks like I'm returning back to where I started from over a short amount of time, but I'm going at the same speed because I'm a nice straight line. So this looks like I went forward, I stopped for a little while, and then I backed right up. This question, let's look at it. It says an object is thrown upward. Which pair of graphs best represents the object's kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy as functions of its displacement, which just means distance, while it rises? So let's think about it. If I throw a ball up in the air, as it gets higher and farther away from me, the potential energy should get higher. Also, as it's getting farther away from me, it should be slowing down as gravity starts to act on it, so my kinetic energy should be getting lower. So we're going to try and find graphs that have a kinetic energy that seems to be decreasing, which would be a slant from high to low, going from left to right, and your potential energy should be getting higher, so going from left to right, increasing. This graph down here in the bottom shows my kinetic energy increasing as it gets farther away, away from me. Well, if I'm throwing something up in the air, then my kinetic energy is not going to get higher as it gets away from me. It's going to actually start to slow down before it comes to its apex and then starts coming down again. Down here on the bottom, I do have kinetic energy decreasing, so that's good. So we like a decrease in kinetic energy, but my potential energy has a straight across line. Potential energy straight across means that the potential energy is staying exactly the same no matter how far away it gets from me. Okay, that's not the case. If I throw it up in the air, the potential energy should be increasing. So I'm looking for an upward slope for potential energy. Right here, I have a potential energy that's actually decreasing. This would be the way down. This would be after I threw my ball in the air, when it comes down, this is what its graph would look like. So that's not what I'm going for right now. My number one should be what it looks like when I throw an object upward. The kinetic energy is going to slowly decrease as it gets farther away from me, and as it gets farther away from me, the potential energy is growing. All right, guys, that should help you out on your quiz for tomorrow. Make sure that you ask any questions before we get started, and good luck.